Hello everybody and welcome to Game Revolution Radio, the official talk show of GameRevolution.com. Uh, I'm your host, Paul Tamburo, the executive editor of Game Revolution, and you can follow me on Twitter at Paul Tamburo. <laughs> and this week, as always, I remembered this week, and this week, as always, I'm joined by... Uh, I'm Jason Faulkner. I'm senior editor at Game Revolution. You can find me on Twitter at Jason Faulkner. I'm Mac Ashworth, lead editor at Game Revolution, and you can find me at Gaming with Mac. I'm Bradley Russell, news editor at Game Revolution, and you can find me on Twitter at one Bradley Russell. I'm Michael Larry. I'm the features editor, and uh, you can find me on Twitter at Orange Flavor. Because we can't do the same jokes again. Because this is no, totally no, take this, two this, of the podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this might be take two, three, four, or five Dang. that we've tried this week, but uh, we're powering on nonetheless. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So to start off, as always, Jason, what are you playing? Zelda, I have an idea. Zelda: a Link to the Past. <laughs> <laughs> this is I'm only traveling. funny to us. That's the best part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, playing some some old Zelda. Uh, getting ready for Link's Awakening to come out. Um, it's been years since I have played it, so yeah. I wanted to go back and and get some of that top down. Zelda action going. Don't really like the first Zelda. Just going to put that out there. Uh, so, huh. by well, default, I was going to say, where does, where does Link to the Past sort of rank on your sort of Zelda list? Oh, God. Um, Top three? Uh, it's probably Ocarina of Time. Mm. Then, like, uh, the newest one, Breath of the Wild. Then, uh, okay. yeah. Wind Waker. Then, you know, you really got to sort it into 2D versus 3D Zeldas. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, I agree. You know, yeah, yeah. it's, uh, but it's pretty what's high. The, there. What, what's the, what's the opposition against the first Zelda? It's I just, too, it's too yeah, go on. Yeah. grindy, boring. You know, it has that NES thing where they're like, Oh, just Jeez. have the enemies respawn, you know, every single screen you go past. Yeah. Uh, yeah. and it's all right. I mean, for the time it was really cool, you know, uh, but it's just at this point, it's like, the age is really showing, it's, and it's, it's really too many, too many of those open world yeah. games, isn't it? That's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Forty hour <laughs> RPGs, nobody's got time for that anymore. Uh, Mac, what are you playing? Has Jason not been playing anything else? No, no. All right. Anyway, <laughs> uh, um, we've got, we've got, we've got, to, we've, got to, we've got to cut, we've got to cut this short this time. This is our third take. <laughs> I've been playing uh, Borderlands Two. I'm, I'm committing to the hype uh, yeah. surrounding Borderlands Three. Um, and I'm enjoying it a lot. I'm using a class that I hadn't used before. Um, I'm loving it, even though I've just played through Anthem. I've just played through the Division Two. I'm now playing another loot shooter for that's that's how <laughs> good it is, I suppose. Even though it's like six years old. Um, I've also yeah. just finished Red Dead Redemption Two. Which, oh my god! Uh, I think it's seventy hours. There isn't actually a stat in the game, which is a little unusual for Rockstar. Usually, you can mm. see. Yeah, it feels like you've it. been playing that for a lot longer than seventy hours. Oh, uh, it has been. Uh, the, the problem with this kind of game is no one's completed it, but there's some <laughs> significant twists at the end and stuff that you. Is you the might twist that the, the player dies from old age? No, it's actually Clementine uh, yeah. dies. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> there's um. There's some pacing issues, but at that point you're so invested. Well, seventy that, hours. I hope so. <laughs> I fucking imagine, yeah, sir. <laughs> the whole game's but a pacing issue. It's one of my <laughs> no. It's one of my favorite games though now of all time. Like it is, it oh, nails yeah. so much, so cool. much. And but it, the problem is, it takes like forty plus hours to get to this kind of ramping up. Uh, that, that I doubt any of you, well, Jason, uh, will experience. Um, yeah. And I actually yeah. tweeted yeah. out asking who has finished the game. And um, thirty-one percent said reply? yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so, and this is if they played it. So to be, yeah. So it's just it's one of those. But I think the original had that issue as well. To be honest, what what, what percentage was that of people who said that they had completed it? It's thirty-one percent yes with epilogues, and then the rest uh, are, are like no. Oh, but there's, I there's two to. epilogues, isn't there? Oh like, man! Oh, it's just so two bizarre. Epilogues? I mean, one's bad enough, but. Uh, the, <laughs> If yeah. I described the gameplay that was in the epilogues, you'd be like, "What?" But um, it's it's just this the the build the character development and leading on to the next game, like Red Dead One, it's just done so well, and you're just so it's just there's one word for it. It's just epic in that <coughs> the scale of it and how you feel at the end of it. It's like a 800 page book, I guess. It's like it doesn't sound great, like 
a, a good pitch <laughs> to someone here read this book but once you know the journey throughout and also the payoff is satisfying so um, I feel like there's a big but here. Like you're gonna say, but I hated the gameplay. Is that is that true? It, the thing is, is, though, the yeah, sluggishness, is. the yeah. sluggishness <laughs> that everyone was complaining about in the first hour. While you get used to it, there's just occasions <laughs> yeah. where you'll just die because you know you bumped into someone. Or there was one where uh, I had to pick up some dynamite with Square, but Square is also jump or leap over the ledge. So I oh, went to the dynamite and then just leapt off the bridge and died. <laughs> and I had to oh. redo this incredibly tedious task uh, so there's clumsy bits like that but in the grand scheme it's just uh, an incredible game that everyone should play if they can find the time which most of us can't see all that jumping off a bridge stuff <laughs> makes me actually want to jump off a bridge because it sounds fucking horrible <laughs> oh, like, the, I can't... the checkpoint was so brutal as well I couldn't believe it I was like, that, no. that's what I'm saying Rockstar's <laughs> games are like I feel like they, they it's like Nintendo in a sense where sometimes you, like they're in their own world which is great because they make things that not a lot of other people make in a way that they don't mm. make them but then, like, it's just stuff like this little stuff like that. Like, oh, the checkpoints suck, or like the the gameplay is super tedious, like that. I, I just that's where I kind of lose it. And for like as much shit as like Assassin's Creed gets or whatever, like those games are just easy to play. Like, I didn't mm. say it last week, but I probably put like thirty more hours into Assassin's Creed Odyssey just well, because it's so easy much. to play. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I didn't mention it last week, but I played through all the DLC. But yeah, just because that game's easy to play in a way that Red Dead isn't. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. Bradley, what are you playing? Um, well, for me, it's less what I've been playing than more what I've been watching because as as a games journalist, you don't ever have time to play games, do you? Um, I watched all 900 hours of WrestleMania. <laughs> so that, that, was, that was something. That was something. Yeah. Paul, you watched... Uh, well, obviously, this is yeah. a, a wrestling podcast, but oh my God. It yeah, ended. it's... Uh, God, uh, anything, anything for seven hours, eight hours, you start watching that, um, yep. you mentally clock out at one point. Uh, oh, I, I, I just I, I gave up on it and I, I skipped through it the next day. To be honest, I think I got Wait, up to WrestleMania yeah. is like what time is it? For, did you guys watch it live? Oh, mid it starts. Yeah, it starts at like ten, and then you'd have to be up until five like in the four morning. or five in the morning. Yeah. I finished half yeah, five I've, in the morning. I think. Yeah, I've done it. I've oh, done it. What I've done it once before, and I was covering it for a website, so I actually had an excuse to stay up that late. Uh, this time, I was like. You know, even though I work from home, I wasn't prepared to wake up for work within three hours. <laughs> we don't even stay up yeah. for E3, do we? we? We ignore E3 as well. Yeah, we ignore E3. We don't do anything. Like that. Um, yeah, I've also uh, been watching a few minutes of a film. But I'm not going to say which films. I think a certain oh, company. Oh no, we might... don't do the guards. I can't, don't I can't say even that. Say, I can't even say anything. I've, just, I've watched something, but I can't say anything about it at all. People will fucking swing in and take us yeah. out where we stand right now with, before we've even uploaded it to Twitch. Um, <laughs> yeah. But also, no, in terms of actual games, I play a little bit of Devil May Cry 5 again. Yeah, like, what did you get to the... That. Yeah, I'm about Mission you. 12. Like Dante's just sort of like come into it a bit more. Dude, Dante um, is so good in that game. I, I don't know, like, the way... Because I'm not a huge Devil May Cry fan, but like Nero came in and like, his combat's really quite simple and you've got the arms and stuff and V kind of bores you to tears a bit. But... Um, with Dante, like he has like so many different styles. There's gunslinger, mm. there's jest. Was it I can't remember, jester, something like that. Sword, uh, sword, sword master, swords, sword master, trickster. And, yeah, and there's all different guns Rogar. and swords, and it's just a bit too much. Like halfway through the game, it's like you should have introduced this a bit sooner. But I'm enjoying yeah. it. I, I still enjoy like Bayonetta a little bit more because that leans more into uh, the tongue in cheek sort of nature of it. Whereas mm. Devil May Cry can, for some reason, get a little bit serious at times when it doesn't need to. Like, it's still silly, but. Yeah. Some of it's a bit like it's got like, a, it's got like um it's got like a lore and a story that people are really heavily invested in, which yeah. I'm always I'm always surprised that that's the case uh, with oh. Devil May Cry. It doesn't seem like that it's that kind of game. I can't sort yeah. of emphasize enough, but how bad the V sections are of the game. They're, They're just... so terrible. I hate oh, them. Michael, you uh, Michael's repeatedly said it. You you uh, Michael just dislike hates V at this point. <laughs> Dude, he sucks. I, I he was like worried him. about like, the morality of complaining about the way he looks because it's actually based <laughs> on a guy just because Michael uh, hates his character that much. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I feel bad. But yeah, like like Brad, Bradley said, it just he just brings the game to a screeching halt. Like just, his yeah, play just, style just doesn't work. You press yeah, one no. button over and over and over and over. And, over. and, and is it easy enough? Danger. Is it easy enough to get through then? It's not like just repeatedly uh, there, dying. No, there was one boss that, like, against like a pack the of horse? enemies. No, 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 no. no. They're, like, a pack of, they're called nobodies, I think. 
and like it took way too long <laughs> to sort of level up your yeah uh, way too long to level up your devil trigger so it was just like a real grind it was like right. it should have been like a five minute boss and like maybe 20 minutes of me yeah. just dodging stuff and waiting to, for my demons to come <coughs> back not great but no enjoying the game enjoying the game Good. nice change of pace Michael what are you yeah. playing well, like I said, uh, I ran through all the Assassin's Creed Odyssey DLC, um, and that's yeah. like game aside. I, I think it's really cool how they have supported that game. They've uploaded a bunch of free missions, uh, or uploaded, <coughs> is a different way to say that. But the free missions are some of them are pretty good. I say one of them is probably the best in the uh, side quest in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, but the actual DLC, the the first Blade stuff, um, it's it starts out pretty well. It's like a really really uh, far precursor to all the assassin and templar stuff and i think it's pretty cool but there's like this weird tonal shift like at the end of the second episode and it kind of yeah <laughs> i don't want to spoil it but it was like source of that the source of that controversy that came out that quote like went against like players choices and stuff yeah um i didn't like it i mean can i say it real quick it's not a huge spoiler I think, yeah i think um, you can. i can say I with some confidence it, I... that no one cares about assassin's creed odyssey <laughs> so. okay i think uh, i think news stories pretty heavily covered the whole yeah, um, debate yeah. around that anyway so they basically make you have a kid with this one person in the dlc sure. and i don't know if it works if how you're if you're a guy <laughs> the other person is just a woman but um yeah you end up having a kid and then it's like i didn't I didn't, you either have the kid like with the guy because you like him or you have the kid just to like further your bloodline kind of like a surrogate right, okay. parent kind of thing yeah um it's just very weird because then it's like I, I didn't like him that much anyway and then so cassandra like totally switches into mother mode <laughs> and it's just like sure. this weird tonal <laughs> shift of, of like out of character yeah i didn't i didn't care for it much um but yeah well, it kind not, of it didn't it wasn't the controversy like it kind of retconned gay relationships with the game that people were having yeah because it didn't it oh well, i played it after the patch but i i would assume they would just make you like this guy no matter what even if you were playing as like a bi woman or a straight uh woman um yeah or, or a, a lesbian or something but yeah um it, yeah, it's weird, but I did that a couple weeks ago. The, the most thing I've been running through now is this new FromSoft game that's really hard, and it's called Bloodborne. Um, uh. Not Sekiro. <laughs> yeah, no, I I wanted to get through Bloodborne before Sekiro came out, and then I just didn't have time. And then Very I've been I, I, I need something to tide me over until MK11. So I popped in Heavy Rain and beat that within like three days. And then, yeah. God, and you then really I, switched up from thinking that you were going to play Bloodborne <laughs> to playing Heavy Rain. <laughs> Yeah, and then I finished Heavy Rain. I was like, ah, I get, I'll get Bloodborne a shot. And I think it took me two days where I just was screaming and hating everything. And Had then you played Heavy, you, uh, did you play Heavy Rain before? That? Yeah, did yeah, yeah before? I did. I did. I put, dude, uh, fuck it. That, that game is so t- terribly written. It is just like the I, room. Uh, oh, I love it's so it. bad. I love Heavy Rain. No, no, it's, it's such a dumb game. Yeah, oh, it's dumb as hell. But, but, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jason. Uh, that's what we was calling when you was away for two yeah. days, Jason. Yeah. Yeah. Pre- we, were pressing yeah. X, we were pressing X to Jason. <laughs> Jason. Pressing Jason. X to Jason. Um, Jason. Yeah. yeah, no. I guess I'll move from Heavy Rain. Yeah, Heavy Rain hasn't really aged well. It's still really entertaining, but there's huge plot holes. Uh, everyone sucks at acting. There's no mm. uh, through line through the accents. Like, you could just tell there are a bunch of French people just trying to do American accents. I know this shit's like nine years old at this point, but yeah. it's just funny to hear, like, because I think back then it was considered as like a huge thing, like oh my god, like oh narrative. yeah, and it now like, like that it, game, it's a dime a dozen now. It was know? super. It was. Su- I remember it not. I guess innovative would be the wrong word, but I remember seeing that game being advertised around that period of time and thinking, oh, I am definitely going to pick up a PS3 for that for that specific game. There is nothing like that I've ever played, and now yeah. and now most kind of narrative driven games are like yeah. that. Um, yeah and i still so i think it benefited from that newness but now it's just kind of like this weird b movie because it, it's a soap opera dude like it's yeah, so it it's so corny and i it still was entertaining like i still like i i made some different choices i think than i made all those years ago and that was kind of neat to see how that played out um yeah but yeah that game's weird but i i, I didn't even mean to talk about heavy rain i was going to talk about bloodborne because yeah i spent like two days screaming about it and then it just clicked so hard in that game like I'm not obsessing about it, but I, I think I get it now. Like I, I'm, I think I'm yeah. near the three yeah. quarters way, and I just it's so fucking good. Like God damn it, um, I, I, I didn't think I'd. On a, yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Um, I got yeah, yeah, like I said, I got stuck on a boss, the electric dog thing, um, and it made me so mad. But yeah, I, it's always weird because it was coming out after all this like <laughs> easy mode stuff, and yeah. I think I would have probably knocked it down because I didn't like that the boss so much, but. 
I, I don't know if I'm glad that I stuck with it, but I I, I feel like I, it made me kind of learn the combat in a way that I think makes the game better. So yeah, um, yeah, fucking a that the game's so good. God damn it! But that's it, pretty much. <laughs> nice. Um, so Mac, you mentioned that you've been playing Borderlands Two uh, this week. There was the big Borderlands Three reveal recently. Slash I think you're our show. resident. Yeah, I feel like you're our resident uh, Borderlands expert around here. Um, did we all watch the Gearbox live stream? I watched the terrible game bits, of which, as Max said earlier, was pretty much <clears throat> most of it anyway. Oh, it was. I watched it, 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 my skin. It was yeah. a tough watch that was so um for anyone who hasn't seen it randy pitchford who's the gearbox ceo essentially turned up and used Uh the hour the hour allotted time he was given the vast majority of it to uh show off his magic tricks um i mean if you're gonna do it you might as well do it then when everyone's watching so oh, like, fair, fair play, just, fair play. Like, yeah. <laughs> to have the balls to do that. Oh, the the balls on that bloke to 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 use the Borderlands three stream <laughs> to do it. Like the one, what what else do like Gearbox really put out? Like Borderlands is their obviously their main their Duke, main Duke property. Nukem, Storm. Yeah, their, their well, main I mean, they property. Publish, they publish their, Borderlands is that yeah yeah, but Borderlands is their main property, isn't it? Aliens yeah. and. Uh, and to use it to be like, right, this is where my magic is needed. Um, <laughs> what did he get? He showed off, um, he used it to show off a new Borderlands card game, I think. Yeah. Is that what it was? <laughs> With, yeah, uh, he two, did. Two, like, one was like um, quite a famous cosplayer, I think, the, the woman who he was doing the tricks with, and then just another guy. And, uh, oh, it was su- such a difficult watch. But then they, they cut to, at the end, um, the Borderlands 3 trailer that was all out of sync. <coughs> And they, uh, it, it was all completely out of sync, and they had to play it like three times. And on the third time, he like really criticised Pax. It was like, well, I wish yeah, I that was fucked my, up. I wish I would have brought my own equipment, and everybody had to boo. It was like, oh, this is the worst <laughs> reveal for any game ever. Um, so, uh, Borderlands Three, uh, what were you thinking? Um, mm. It's going to be a strange um, one because it's entering this sort of live service loot shooter world that, it, that didn't exist when Borderlands 2 sort of came about. Um, I'm not yeah. quite sure where it's going to fit in, to be honest with you, um, because it's not going to be a massively old multiplayer game. It's, it's just what the, uh, what is it, four player co op sort of thing. And, yeah. uh, Have they confirmed that? Have they confirmed it's just four players? Um, I was curious. Well, in, in the trailers, no. like split screen for four players, but it doesn't show anything. Okay. I'm sure there's just a team of just four Vault Hunters, wasn't there? Was there more? <coughs> That's well, what I, thought. I wasn't sure if they confirmed more. Well, I kind of think they, they, would, have, they would have revealed that. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah, good yeah. point, good point, good point. I, I don't know, I mean, I'm, I'm going to play it, I'm going to enjoy it. Um, yeah. It just probably won't stand out as much as before, which is, I mean, whatever, really. I'm, That's just it. I, I, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of in two minds about that, because I feel like I was never really that struck in the Borderlands series. But now I feel like we get so many loot shooters these days um, that even now Borderlands is still quite unique in that space. It has a yeah. lot of character, uh, doesn't it? It's not like yeah, dreary and grey and, and it, like they no put actual real... colour into it and personality. Yeah, and no loot shooters really. At least I, I can't really think of one, save for like Destiny. But even then that was kind of like a... Um, I don't know. It, it wasn't exactly... It took, <laughs> quite, it took quite a while for that to build up its character and its personality. I don't know, Mac. What 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 do you think? Um, I'm pretty hyped about it all. Just um, I think after playing Anthem and uh, the Division Two, yeah. um, you kind of and then going to Borderlands Two, and you kind of see the humor. You see how ridiculous the main missions and side missions are, and just it kind of makes you interested in missions that would otherwise, you know, is we we like I criticized Anthem for how many times you have to defend an area, for example. Um, but yeah. in Borderlands, it's like you know defending a dildo or something. So it's like hilarious, <laughs> um, so, and you're cool with that. Uh, you know? Defend dildo like, missions. I've done too many of those in my day. <laughs> a a fetch quest to get dildo. <laughs> a fetch quest to get like scooters, dirty magazines, and stuff like this. Is you know mm. they do dress it up in in, and and the voice acting as well across the cast. It, it's just so funny and. Um, I mean, that's that's what ke- keeps me going. You haven't got it. to and the also, Borderlands 2 DLC yet, have you, either? Well, that's what I mean. I've, uh, I've done the like, really Scarlet. 
Um, I haven't done the tiny Tina one. That's the I think we were really under leveled. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. one's supposed to be the best. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, so we're yeah, just yeah. grinding our way. Is it? Yeah. Oh, I won't ruin we're it just... for Mac, but um, they take it into a really different direction. Still with the Borderlands style. But, it's like Dungeons uh, yeah, and Dragons. Isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty it's cool. Oh, really? Yeah, D and D. Yeah. Pretty cool. So we're, so we're just uh, we're basically making our way to that because we didn't do it so many years ago. So yeah. See, I mean, you don't kind of get that that uh, you don't get that level of personality in any kind of these loot shooters. No, these loot shooters yeah. feel very much made by committee, and Borderlands kicked yeah. it off with something that was a bit more out of left field. Yeah, and it's weird too because like I know you guys are saying like it was before the online looter shooters, but it's like there's so many like looter shooters now that are online. It's like I think people were complaining that it's like still kind of like a not single player, but like a pretty solitary, like four people squad. Like if it's, even if it is kind of the same as it was, almost, that is still yeah. pretty different nowadays. So yeah. I, I hope it, I hope it works out. Cause I know people were kind of being like, Oh, it just looks like borderlands too. But it's like, it's been so long since then. And mm. I think that's, I think that's kind of not okay, but like, it seems bigger, even if it isn't that much different from yeah. you know, this you know that trailer or whatever so i hope be, it's cool i'll uh-huh. be interested to see kind of how long it lasts the sort of lifespan of it because we're probably yeah by the time it release we're probably about a year away from a ps5 and the new xbox oh yeah yeah so they're probably gonna have to just sort of pull it to that um yeah or, if it's got, the, if it's got, the, if it's got uh, legs behind it some longevity <laughs> then it'll definitely get ported over to the next next gen consoles it's late late 2019 isn't it september 2019 september, september 13th. 13th yeah 13th yeah right okay um well, I mean, even outside of it releasing on the uh, potentially releasing on next gen consoles, uh, it's got to it's got to get past. It's got to release on PC first. Yeah. Um, a lot of a lot of people are annoyed about um, it being exclusive up to Epic Game Store. Um, is this something that 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 bothers us? No, um, I'll tell you why as well. Because it's it's no difference to owning different consoles. It's just people no. don't people are so loyal to Steam now in the same way that maybe they were loyal to nintendo in the 80s they didn't want a bit of change and it's really not you have to open up a different browser once every so often yeah it's not i or mean it's not even as, it's, it's not even as extensive as consoles you don't have to pay anything else it just appears yeah, on yeah. that console exactly you don't pay anything that, that else platform. and so for example say you owned an xbox and a playstation and maybe you only have room for one i could see yeah. that being a problem but on your on your setup whatever you have yeah. space for two i mean it, yeah. may be, it may be a little bit irritating, but it takes five minutes outside of your day. I, I don't. Yeah. But, but guys, guys, China, China's looking in. China's, <laughs> China's looking in. Mm. Michael, you mentioned um, the other day you had a bit of a different opinion on it um, about Epic Games Store, about the, or you said that one of our other writers had a, had a good point about it. What's the what's what's the alternate take? What's the alternative to the Epic Game Store? No, like as in you spoke about um, that one of our writers, Chris, had mentioned about the um, like. Oh, Chris. You know, yeah, about yeah. whether about why why it isn't a good thing essentially. Yeah, it, well, I think the problem with like I'll get to it in a sec, but like these art- sure. these legitimate arguments get buried underneath like review bombing and like threads. Like so, it's like there are legitimate points to the Epic Game Store exclusivity because I mean, just straight up, uh, it's like objectively not a very feature complete. Uh, uh, launcher so it's like if you want to play co-op which you will yes yeah. it's, it's it's just not as filled out there aren't even achievements which i know that's i don't think it has release dates on there yeah it well i, I don't know i don't use the epic game store that much mm-hmm. but um it's it just people would want a more feature complete browser yeah and the fact that this is not that is just it's it would be frustrating for people who are like oh i'm getting like this skimpy version it, it'd be like um circa like 2007 if you were buying a ps3 and an xbox 360 version of a game like the ps3 version wouldn't have been as filled out because that system just didn't have the infrastructure to support like you know in-game chat and stuff like that and like trophies like those weren't existing yet that's the thing i would maybe compare to um so i can relate to it um yeah because that's when the xbox 360 just had more uh, features for people yeah, to of course. take advantage of so i think it's yeah. obviously it's released it's releasing on like a less <coughs> like you said feed it's releasing on a less feature packed platform right now but i think like the main thing to take yeah. into consideration is uh you know eventually if more games release exclusively on the epic game store and it starts to get a bit more um money behind it then eventually <coughs> those features will come Eventually, those features will come. Uh, I think it's Bradley. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think he's done. Oh, you're okay. Yeah, I'm good. 
<laughs> no, eventually, <laughs> eventually, um, you know, we're gonna. It's gonna get more features, and uh, Steam won't have as much of the monopoly on um, yeah. on on PC games. Uh, I think that's the biggest point too, because then uh, Epic Games will eventually catch up. And I, you're, I don't know if they've said this, but I'm hoping at least that there's not like the the early access stuff. Like we're not going to be talking about like Rape Day Two is coming to Epic Game Store. You know, like I I think that is enough. I mean, again, I don't play PC games that much, but like that is enough for me as an outsider to want Epic to succeed. That knowing that we won't have to have these stupid controversial stories of like these utter offensive trash just being uploaded yeah. because some yeah. edge Lord in Norway thought it was funny, you know, because steam just has a very hands off approach to whatever gets published on it. Doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, and it fucking sucks. Yeah. Whereas Epic games, I mean, they, they, they don't really have that many releases on there right now. Um, but the games that they are secure in are all, are all high quality. Uh, Jason, yeah. you, you play, um, PC games, probably the mm-hmm. most out of all of us. What, what are your thoughts on, on it? Uh, I mean, uh, I'm with everyone else. The only problem I have with Epic's store exclusivity is, uh, there's no like cloud saving and, uh, yeah. you know, like it just got a search function in the store and, <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Um, Damn. You know, there's. I, I don't think there's trophies or anything like that yet. Uh, at least okay. I haven't noticed them. Um, so it's like once it, once the launcher is competitive with the Steam launcher, you know, there's. It's just a simple, simple capitalism, you know, uh, and yeah. capitalism isn't pointed just towards the consumer. You know, it's also, you know, businesses play a part in that too. And if Epic is offering a better deal for these people when it comes to, you know, cut of the money and, uh, you know, publicizing the games. Um, I think that, you know, that's just, yeah. that's just part of the free market. Uh, you know, uh, what but about, yeah. What, what about, what about it actually working? Like what do we think that, you know, Epic games securing all of these exclusive games, is that something that's necessarily going to work for them? Um, like work work for the games that are aligning themselves with Epic. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. this the the stores, you know, they're, it's a smaller store, yeah. so you're that much more likely to see, you know, uh, an individual game. You know, there's like what probably less than a hundred. Uh, yeah, you know, probably much less than a hundred. Last time I checked, yeah, but you I know, if, like if you go to handfuls. If you go to the Epic Game Store, you know, and you scroll down the store, you know, it takes you probably less than a minute to see every title. Uh, and yeah. if you're on there, you're already, you know, probably thinking about like, oh, what, I've got a little money, maybe I'll spend it here. Um, yeah. You know, so, but that much less competition uh, in that storefront, I think that it will work out for uh, people who go that route. And the fact that just going, uh, exclusive to the epic store is controversial now i mean any any press is good press you know yeah. <laughs> yeah. you're 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 not only are you getting <coughs> the, your, the standard marketing from those companies you're you're basically getting free marketing uh just from stories saying like you know borderlands 3 is epic game store exclusive you know fuck randy yeah. pittsford uh, <laughs> you know that second part maybe I'll, I'll i'll go for that but and uh, um I think that's just part of the deal. Uh, Steam, you know, you get basically free publicity from, you know, the popular new releases and top sellers mm-hmm. lists, and it. it'll match you to games that it thinks you'll like. <coughs> but, you know, there's such a huge amount of games on Steam that, you know, even the big big dogs only get a very small piece of that front page pie. So Yeah, and, and also, like, um, I like how <laughs> they were going and review bombing Borderlands on Steam, and it's like you're kind of just proving that um, why people don't want to go on Steam because it just has those kind of not abuse thing, but like it's it's another aspect for people to get abused on. So it's like we sh- you should come to Steam. Uh, we're just going to scream at you on Steam. It's like that doesn't make any sense. If anything, that's maybe making them feel more a bit more vindicated for going to the Epic Games Store. It's so stupid. People are dumb. <laughs> um so the big thing that people have been talking about this week i guess the majority of the uh, of of twitter uh there's been a lot there's been a lot of a lot of tasty memes about about this um so sakira michael which you were talking about earlier um about its high difficulty level uh an article was posted on pc gamer um 
about beating the final bu- uh, the writer beat the, the final boss of Sekiro using cheats. Uh, so this we revoked prompt- his gamer card, and he no longer yeah, works in this industry. It, yeah, so. his, his gaming license is now gone. He can uh, <laughs> he can no longer write about video games. <laughs> the, this guy, right, who wrote this article on PC Gamer, got that much fucking hate about this that he just had to delete his Twitter account. Oh really? Um, really? Okay. Wow. Yeah, he just actually just deleted his online presence because of that much shit that he got about this. Uh, he wrote an article, uh, I beat Sekiro's final boss with cheats and I feel fine. Uh, <laughs> I love it. It's so sassy. <laughs> yeah, well, you know immediately what you're going to do when you write an article like that, but still, Jesus Christ. So, um, so which is my absolute favourite, um, <laughs> a guy on Twitter uh, going by the handle Fetusberry Ass Bastard Crunch. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> tw- yeah. Tweeted, cruel parents. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. As if fetus, bar- <laughs> fetus berry wasn't a bad enough first now. Uh, you cheated. Not he tweeted. You cheated. Not uh, quote tweet in this article. You cheated not only the game but yourself. You didn't grow. You didn't improve. You took a shortcut and gained nothing. You experienced a hollow victory. Nothing was risked and nothing was gained. It's sad that you don't know the difference. So, it's so overly dramatic, fucking dude. Hell. Oh my right. god. Okay, so obviously ridiculous tweet, right? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, it, car- it carries on in the thread how am I gatekeeping I'm saying you should struggle so you can improve smooth seas do not make a strong sailor <laughs> so, so um, and it's kind of like, like, off in the, into like a secure easy mode yeah, sort of discussion so, ob- which we I actually broke, broke on April 1st and no one seemed to pick up on that uh, yeah we did easy we mode, did break yeah, yeah. um but essentially, I think like obviously a ridiculous tweet um, that that has now been uh, like so many memes beyond infinity. But um, it is part of like the wider conversation, I guess, about Sakira, uh, which is that kind of a lot of people are annoyed about um, games journalists in particular for talking about Sakira, for for talking about uh, it having an like including an easy mode to make it easier for people to play it for it including different um accessibility options so um what do we think about that what what do we think about Sekiro introducing like an easy mode accessibility options and this kind of this reaction that that people have had about um conversations surrounding the game it's such a difficult one isn't it because you can't outright say either way that Sekiro should or shouldn't have an easy mode just because the logistics of it would be insane it wouldn't be the same yeah. game um, but also I kind of think the other side of it games like Cuphead had an easy mode and that didn't make that any less difficult if you didn't want it to yeah. be um, yeah because that's always the problem sorry to cut you off but no, like that's, fine. that's yeah. what pisses me off about this like there are games that are hard that do have easy modes that we don't talk about because yeah. they already have those easy modes. Like Cuphead's a great example. Like we never, no one goes like, uh, "Cuphead sucks" because there's a simple mode. It's like no, everyone talks about how hard that game is because that option's there. But that option's there if you don't um, hmm. want to partake in that. Although Cuphead is a little different because I think you can't play against the last boss unless you've beaten no, you every can't. level no, on no, normal. No, no. Yeah. So there's there's some obviously some gate not gatekeeping, but like like I guess literal gatekeeping in Cuphead's yeah. case. But like we don't talk about <coughs> like you know. Like I, I wrote about it last month. Like I think Capcom's been doing well. Like with like Resident Evil Two and Resident Evil Seven and Devil May Cry Five. Like those all have those hardcore difficulties, and they have the easy stuff. But we don't talk about that because it already has it in the game. I don't know. It yeah. like if Celeste had launched or uh, without all the accessibility stuff, but patched in later, would people be pissed? Even though no one's pissed that that stuff is already in there. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's just well, it's such a dumb argument. This 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 kind of ties in. So we had a re, uh, read a question um, this week from DJJ sixty six who wrote, uh, "I understand that inclusivity is a good goal to strive for, but do you really feel like every single game requires an easily easy slash push A to win mode? Wouldn't that also imply that every single game requires a nightmare difficulty mode? My personal opinion is that diversity of games is very important, and that we should not dictate to creators how they should go about creating and executing their vision. And if said vision is incredible." 
incredibly difficult game with a high skill ceiling, who are we to tell them to lower said difficulty for whatever reason if that is not part of their vision? After all, if games are art, you absolutely would never dictate to an artist what they should and should not draw. What does this have to apply with games? So I think, to start off, I don't think anybody's asking, obviously, push a push out to win mode is uh, quite an yeah. exaggerated version well, of being what people are kind of asking for here. Would suggest otherwise, yeah. but um, <laughs> yeah, I think part of the problem is people are conflating easy mode with with accessibility, accessibility, and you need accessibility. Yeah. Whether either whether someone has disabilities or yeah. impairments, they need to be catered for. There shouldn't really be an argument yeah, about course. that at all. No. Um, well, it's the same as you wouldn't call like you know the adaptive controller or something insert in an easy mode into into all of games. No. It's literally just a way for these people to be handle games in their, to handle games in their current state, but in a way that obviously benefits them more than a standard controller. Some people I was reading them. Um, there's a charity called Able Gamers um, yeah. who have uh, penned like a, it's a really good like um, uh, document and stuff about how to make games more accessible. And it's even stuff like uh, allowing your game uh, that is perhaps predominantly controlled by a controller uh, a controller to in- include like keyboard and mouse functionality and stuff like that with it and uh, having a proper tutorial um, having you know larger dialogue boxes there's like tons of ways that you can simply <coughs> make a game more accessible than just you know press A to win um, yeah. that people that people are kind of insisting that uh, that those arguing for accessibility are, um, are suggesting which is not really the case it's two different arguments that are related because like yeah if you're going to make yeah. it more accessible it probably has to be like a little easier but that doesn't mean like they're the same thing like i don't know i i think it, it'd be cool if games did both because it always it comes when people go like it's all up to the creators but it's like that means you're meaning like the creators aren't open to feedback because sometimes if someone went like hey maybe like uh i don't know the last of us <coughs> three needs a an easy mode or an accessible yeah. mode and they're like Oh, you know, that is a good idea. And then if they incorporate the feedback, if they feel compelled, like it's a compelling enough argument to incorporate that within their own game, I think that's okay. Because visions, yeah. the f- initial vision isn't going to be like the end all be all, like the objectively right thing. Like artists change their mind. And uh, I think Danny O'Dwyer brought up a good point. He he made a video about this that I think people should check out. Um, yeah. It's a game, the artist comparison of like, dra- of like drawing is like completely different because that's only one person. So that's only one person's vision. Whereas like multiple people on a video game team, yeah, they might have different visions of what the gameplay should be or how it should be accessible. And that's that's why I am saying like, there's not like just one hive mind where it's like, this yeah. is our vision. We are making game. Whose um, vision are you changing when, you, when you're making yeah, these suggestions? Exactly. So, and, and then Corey Barlog, which I thought was really cool because God of War has a yeah. couple of accessibility options. He was like, yeah, my vision wasn't compromised at all. And like, I, I know that game like, is really good and stuff but and it came out well but you never know like i don't know it just i i think people are sort of overblowing um i've got i've got Cor- uh, Corey barlog's uh comment here he said accessibility yeah. will never has never and will never be a compromise to my vision to me yeah. accessibility does not exist in contradict in contradiction to anyone's creative vision but rather it is an essential aspect of any experience you wish to be enjoyed by the greatest number of humans possible and essentially i feel like that's what a lot of these arguments <coughs> are like obvious obviously that tweet was like a greatly exaggerated version of what what these kind of arguments are that people do with these gatekeepers keeping arguments but essentially it is these are my toys you've got to keep yeah. these people out from playing them which you know if if you're tr- if you're locking people out who do have a disability or something from playing it playing a game like Sekiro um, that's what I'm not saying I'm not saying that from software are doing that I'm just saying the people who are who are pushing for greater accessibility want people to be able to play all of these games um, if you're kind of pushing these people out um then I don't look. How does that add to your experience of the game? Yeah, it doesn't. This is what also, I don't no one, yeah, and no one's forcing them. No one's holding the gun to their head, saying you're, you're playing easy mode. No, <laughs> yeah. we're patching this in, and you're, you're you have to play this. You can't you can't play anything else. I don't. Yeah, yeah. If you're, it, look, nobody's nobody's sitting there seeing seeing a, a colorblind option in a video game, <laughs> and they're like, "Fuck, God, you've made this simpler for people who don't have my eyes." <laughs> I will will say though going back to the uh, PC Gamer article it's such a weird thing to write though isn't it in terms of he he knew exactly uh, not to excuse any of the reaction he got which like some of it was just ridiculous but he he should have at least seen that coming that 
He also, was throwing got, meat to the beasts. Yeah, and you've got to the final boss. You're pretty good at the game anyway. If yeah, that's that weird. Far. I wonder why yeah. I didn't read it, though. Um, I, I also think one more point is, like, I feel like video games... Well, when you watch a film, like, it's literally dir- the director's, like, vision. <coughs> like, you're seeing, like, not maybe all the time, but what they... Like, exactly what they want to frame. Whereas, like, video games, there's that input. So there's naturally the... the Though you have to weigh and balance what does the player want, what does the director want, because those could be different things. And while like maybe a director wants it to be really hard, if the player doesn't want it like that, um, like how do you, how do you, that's another I think part of this discussion. Like how yeah. do you balance player wants and director wants because of the the interactivity of video games kind of changes well, the think, dynamic. Yeah, I think that's a lot Don't like I um, that's I think that's a lot more of a um, like where you'd lean to where you'd lean towards the developers side of things in my book um say if uh people was just like i want it the the, the, the conversation around bringing an easy mode into games sometimes it's just down to oh just have their hp by <coughs> but it's like it's not really that easy from a developer's perspective i should imagine to make the same game but with all of their all of the enemies made weaker, like that might actually detract from the vision. But that's that's the easy mode conversation rather than the accessibility, accessibility. conversation, yeah. which I think really really gets confused. Corey Barlog, <coughs> Corey Barlog actually did. Um, I think he tweeted out afterwards after there was a game in game games industry dot biz article about um well uh, about Sekiro um and the easy mode and stuff and he I think he tweeted something like it's about accessibility uh not not easy modes um when it comes to Sekiro and I think that's the, I think that's the main point I think people I think like a lot of journalists and a lot of um like uh, gaming personalities on Twitter will routinely say that games should be more inclusive and accessible. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, whether willfully um, or just because they just don't understand the conversation, <coughs> will turn around and say, oh, you're trying to water down my games. You're trying to change my games. You people don't even play games. Why are you yeah. trying to change it's, my games? It's, it feeds in that whole thing where everyone in the games press is some... So I oh, can't see me, Paul, but I'm doing air quotes. Soy boy. Yeah. And like yeah. wanting to like easy mode. You didn't know to everything. do air quotes with me. I am a soy boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, and that's what sucks. Too. That's what sucks. Cause I love playing games on hard. Like I will play every God of War and Devil May Cry and on pretty much as hard as I can get it. And like Last of Us. I, I love that stuff. But I, you know, yeah. I, I, as long as that, those options are, I just, options are where I think it is. And, um, and like I said, I think I posted in our chat. There's a really good game, few game makers toolkits about this. Where like, as long as you maybe if it goes against the vision, like I think Darkest Dungeon has done that kind of stuff. Like, just put it in there and be like, this is not part of our vision. But if you want to do it and make the game easier, it's it's here. Just make it clear. That's that's yeah. all you need to do. And um, what what? Go on, Jason. Uh, I, <laughs> uh, I thought, uh, thought you had something while I was about to complain about something else. Um. I don't know. I just see accessibility as, I don't know, leveling the playing field. Like yeah. it doesn't really have anything to do. Like every, every gamer should get to approach a game, you know, with the, with the same chances of success as everyone else, I think. Yeah. Uh, so it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with difficulty. Uh, like I can't see worth a shit. So <laughs> yeah, I have to have uh, like games that have like a HUD option where you can increase it. Um, you know that really helps me out. Otherwise, like I might have to lower a game from 4K to uh, 1080 to be able to see the text. So yeah, that's like an example of, of making a game, you know, e- more accessible for your for uh, potential players. Uh, that has yeah. absolutely well, f- f- fetus it- berry ass bastard crunch wouldn't be happy about you doing that. Uh, and accessibility and I- can. Oh, sorry. Go on. Uh, on on the flip side, I kind of agree that Sekiro doesn't need an easy mode. Um, yeah. It's just not made for everyone. Like, you know, uh, every, it's just a FromSoft game. You know, it's it's purposefully obtuse and difficult. And I think that's just something that people have to accept. You know, it's just part yeah. of the game's design and the developers don't really have any interest in deviating from that. Um, no. There's games that uh, I may have some interest in that I I just can't play because there are systems or uh, something inside yeah. them that just 
turned me completely off. Um, I don't agree with fetus berry ass bastard crunches uh, Bro, okay. blunt way of putting this. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, these Brumsoft's games are all about the, the enjoyment of, of overcoming adversity. Yeah. And, um, again, uh, I think it's Bradley said, I'm not excusing, you know, the, the attack on this dude at PC Gamer, but this dude... Basically, he stuck his hand in a, a fucking hornet's <laughs> nest and was like, "Why yeah. are these hornets seeing me? Yeah. Why are you know? Yeah. I'm going to delete my but, hand now." But I, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I feel like that's a little bit of victim blamey in a sense. For like, I feel like he should be able to say like, "Hey, I." I think the way it's framed is obviously a little inflammatory. But I, I don't. I don't like how in this I industry mean, we have to just accept that people are going to be fucking dicks to you. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know you're not I, really saying that, Jason, but like. I, I mean, I I'm, I'm pretty much saying that because that is a hate. <laughs> that is a hate click article. That is like 100. percent This dude wanted to stir shit. Like, yeah. we know it. You know how how many times have we written a hot take because we knew people would get. Mm. You know, it would it would get reactions from people. Oh yeah, good yeah. and bad. I mean, I, I we have think... a weekly feature just for that. Yeah, yeah. And and I, so, I don't know. I don't think we should be like, well, gamers like to be mean. I feel like we should. I'd be cool if we lived in an environment where you could say maybe that is a hate clicky article, but yeah. not. And I mean, people be overreacted because like, it's mean. just a fucking game and Chiefs yeah. have been in yeah. games forever. <laughs> and, you know, why don't you care about something else in your life that much? That's kind of pathetic. Uh, you know, maybe you should care about changing the world to that degree instead of about whether some, some dude at PC gamer, uh, game. yeah. fucking slowed down the game a little <laughs> bit. And beat yeah. the final boss. He didn't even review it, so who cares? Like it's it affected nothing other than he wrote uh, like a silly little article to rob people up, and then people got ass hurt. I think. But, uh, 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 carry on. Uh, I don't. I don't know. It, it's just you know, it's just part of the industry. It's what it is. You know, we we as a whole get paid to you know inspire compassion in people. I'll put that, put it, mm -hmm. put it real lightly like that. And then, you know, mm -hmm. some, a lot of people go overboard, especially with things like it this. Is, it, it is shit that that's kind of the, the accepted standard of what's going to happen when you do anything like that. I think to like, I, I agree with Michael on this. Um, cause I think like, you know, you, you'd kind of have to, um, force everybody to have the same level of thick skin for it to not get through it. Some people just aren't, you know, you want to write these kind of articles about games. You want to inspire this level of discussion. Um, and I don't get me wrong. Like I do think if you're writing something like that, if you've been working on the internet for any period of time, you kind of know what you're going to get. Um, but I don't, like, you know, you, you shouldn't get that. <laughs> you shouldn't yeah. get it. Like, and it's like, you know, I, um, so it's like, I I like came up like when I started writing for games like that's that's like having these kind of divisive opinions is something that I really like I like sharing my opinions but like so the amount of times that that would happen um, and I shouldn't imagine like like PC gamers like one of what well, is the top PC website I can imagine the hate is like intensified on that kind of thing but it's really shit to like write something and then that's innocuous in the grand scheme of things and then yeah. suddenly start having your online profiles listed on 4chan and yeah. having to mm. and i'm not like a massively like i'm obviously an online guy because <laughs> i've run a website on the internet but i'm not deeply embedded in twitter like i don't i don't do a hell of a lot of networking or anything but even then it's like you're just sitting there and your phone's blowing up because you've, you've <laughs> like there's yeah. some people on fucking v on 4chan or 8chan or 12chan or 45chan <laughs> sitting there calling you a dickhead repeatedly <laughs> and like finding photos of you and like you know your family members and just <laughs> mess finding them on random boards and it's it, like it's you can just shut off from it you, you can just like you know just be like well i'm not gonna look at it or whatever but when people are posting about you on the internet you're gonna look at it yeah you're, you're gonna, gonna be it, yeah. you're gonna be affected but like, I, I think like I, I, like i've got a relatively thick skin with stuff like that i'm not saying like people are weaker for giving up on it but i just think not everybody should have to have a really really yeah. thick skin to to just fucking share an opinion on Sekiro <laughs> on PC yeah, on video games Jesus Christ yeah. and I do have to say you know not 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 to talk smack about a rival publication but PC Gamer yeah. should have done more to insulate this guy from mm. like 
you know, wh- this is obvious brigading, you know, tactics. Like somebody posted this article on uh, Kotaku in Action or 4chan or some Discord, mm. and, you know, everybody immediately jumped in so they could echo the same sentiment, you know, as viciously as possible. So it's like, yeah, you know, uh, uh, on one hand, it is like, okay, dude, maybe you shouldn't have, uh, you know, written it <laughs> pretty much. Like you, you knew people were going to be pissed. But on the other hand, you know, there's uh, this bad habit uh, of brigading anything now. You know, yeah. people can mm. drop a link in wherever, and then suddenly you've got 10,000 yeah. people who are telling you to kill yourself. Yeah. And you're wrong, and you're, you're uh, you know, excuse me for the, the sexist language, but a pussy. Uh, yeah. You know, um, you need to get good. Uh, and it didn't used to be this way. When I worked at Destructoid, for example, like you could have posted something like that and it would yeah. have stayed contained pretty much in that community. But now yeah. that, you know, Reddit and social media have got so prolific. There wasn't a lot of dedicated forums for people mm-hmm. to be really pissed off before. There was kind yeah. of all fragmented. Now it's like if you've fucked off with a, with a games journalist in particular, you've got all these various areas to go to <coughs> and explain how pissed off you are at yeah. them. Um, yeah. I do agree with the whole obviously we have no idea what's happened beyond the scenes there with them like protecting that guy to be honest I would say that like after reading that article I still don't understand why so many people are annoyed by it there's certainly more things that are posted on a daily basis that are more like um, that you think would get that level of attention I don't understand but like in the past like I know, again, I have, we have no idea what's happened beyond the scenes but I would say like you, you always vouch for um an editorial team to stand up for the writers and to kind of like, like well, yeah protect them like to let like to make sure that they're kind of shielded from that kind of thing it's difficult to do um, yeah. but uh, I, I, like in the past like I've had I've had an editor I've wrote um, something that's garnered a really like high amount of attention and then afterwards the editors like had to put a disclaimer on the article that was like this isn't reflective of our views and stuff and that's that's yeah. what you don't do that's Thanks. that's what you don't do because that's just like well he's going to get fired and stuff and like so that's just baiting them even more there are definitely yeah. things that you can and can't do as an editorial team to help your writers when they write something like that whenever we've had anybody on Game Revolution that's um, that's pitched an article like that you know I'll, I'll always go through with them and let them know what kind of reaction they can expect to get because um, I know from first hand experience what they're going to get um, I, want, I want to know what your article was can you say no no, I can't. It'll throw, it'll throw, it'll throw, I mean, it throws someone under the bus, wouldn't it? So <laughs> I'm not going to say. It. I'll tell you after. Uh, but yeah. So um, so yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, I um. It's just weird um, how that kind of fucking how people just swarm around this kind of thing. Um, uh, I think so, yeah. it all it all comes down to uh, somebody different might play the game that they like, yeah. and they don't like that. I think yeah. it, they pretend like it takes away from their experience. That's yeah. the whole thing. Like they're mad at this PC gamer guy for playing it on easy. Like that they didn't play it on easy. So why do they care? I don't know. Just yeah. yeah. Do your thing. Do your thing. And we've spoken about it before. Even when it comes to easy mode, like um, I'd love it if certain <laughs> games had an easy mode that like, I really, really enjoy the world, but I don't give a shit about the gameplay or anything, and I just kind of yeah. want to exist in that world. Stuff like um, like I've, No Man's Sky isn't exactly the world's most challenging game, but I love the fact that there's a creative mode in that because yeah. I just go and zoom around these worlds in 4K, and it's great. Like you know that kind of thing. It's just giving me more options of how to play that game. Um, I just don't understand. Like you know, I'm not going to sit there at somebody playing survival mode on No Man's Sky while I'm playing Aza and be like, ah, you aren't experiencing these worlds as plentifully as I am. <laughs> like, <laughs> you, you fucking idiots. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, uh, that, that got a little bit meta, but I wanted, I wanted to get even more meta now because, um, so right now we're kind of in the middle of a bit of a um, video game drought, you might say. There are still some... Still some video games knocking around, but uh, not not as many as probably this time last year or and the outlook of this year until kind of latter 2019 um, is a little bit slim in terms of new releases. So I just wanted to kind of go to go on to go through um, how how video game sites deal with downtime. I think it's kind of an interesting perspective for viewers to have. Um, obviously. 
we can't just keep producing content all the time based around new releases and stuff. There are points of the year where there's just a gap in coverage. So, um, Jason, you're uh, you're an old hat at this. You've been doing it for a while. Yeah. Um, just uh, do you want to give us a, li- a little a little rundown of how of how this kind of thing operates when we're when there's a bit well, of a gap in the market? For one, you, you start covering everything. Yeah. So this is yeah. when you start seeing trailer posts for games you've never heard of. Yeah. From companies who have never made games before, um, <laughs> that's that's a big filler right there. Um, yeah. Nowadays, uh, back when I started, you couldn't depend on hot takes as much, you know, no. or, or like you know, opinion pieces, features, that kind of thing. Uh, you'll start seeing a lot of interviews people will do on things that aren't exactly topical. Uh, yeah. You'll see a lot of things. Uh, centered around game anniversaries, um, that sort of thing. Like evergreen pieces, like, yeah. you know, why, why I love Earthbound a whole bunch. Uh, <laughs> everyone will, every game place without fail will write something about a Super Nintendo or PlayStation era uh, yeah. game at least once a week and why it still holds up. Um, I think from like a, like a, like a game website perspective, it's really strange how you'll have. I mean, how many game releases were there in? Was it February that was a really big month or March? Three or four quite big ones. Yeah, it's like Anthem, Far Cry, Metro. I still, yeah, I still don't for the life of me understand why that kind of thing happens. They all play um, Chicken and Lost. Yeah. Yeah. What I've never really like looked into it specifically why they release in a specific period of time. Um, does anybody know why they actually release so many games within such a short spell of time? I guess. I mean, isn't it just games? fiscal quarters? Is yeah, that's what I was I yeah, they probably. I'm guessing. Is that just what it is? Dropped in yeah. February, so they can report. You know, just so they can have the it sales. In April. Yeah, by April probably. Man, yes. also like Far Cry. I know you, you mentioned it, but I keep seeing Far Cry and you don't for like twenty bucks. So I, it. Oh, is that, I, that, that far, the no? perception of like? That game probably didn't sell well because they probably were like, oh, people bought Far Cry Five, oh boy, and then no one bought it because yeah. they bought Far Cry Five. Um, I don't know. That's I just thought that was weird that like these games are already going on pretty deep discount. Like Crackdown Three probably is like probably has oh, hit Crackdown thirty bucks. Crackdown Three has got to be nothing month. now. Sure, <laughs> I didn't hear anybody. Yeah. It didn't even make it into the top ten sales chart, did it? Oh right, yeah, you did. It didn't. Um, Stuff like and yeah, well, it was on Game Pass too. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the, that uh, Kotaku report, yeah, Kotaku report about um, Anthem and Bioware oh, right. about how it was rushed to market. Essentially, um, they kind of threw it out there before they even knew what it was. Still don't understand. Like, obviously, if they're keeping it for the financial year, that makes a lot more sense. Uh, I didn't even think about that that they've rushed it for February March time to close out the year before the financial year ends in April. But like surely just leaving it to bake for a couple more months and then releasing a fuller game is better than just having it launched during yeah. a particularly fi- a particular financial year because then that just yeah. bolsters yourself for the next year. I don't understand. Yeah, yeah, like like look at the summer. Like that would be a cool. Su- There's not really much coming out the summer, and the fact no. that like a a big looty shooty game like it would almost benefit from having nof- nothing around it because people would be like, well, fuck it. What else am I gonna play? Like, well, maybe Crash Team Racing. But um, you know. Yeah. Not, I think it would have benefited from that obvious. Oh, that's a dumb thing to say because it's obvious, but yeah. Well, like, what what co- what coverage are you getting from releasing uh, four games in the space of a period of time? Like, you know, that divides up the amount of coverage you're going to get on traditional sites, um, on Twitch streams, YouTubers. Um, Wait, didn't Apex Apex came around around then too? Oh, right? Yeah, yeah, Apex, yeah. Just, oh, Apex the just threw it all under the bus, <laughs> really. <laughs> Which I don't think I don't think EA thought that it was going to. To be honest, that, that had a stealth release, didn't it? Didn't they just like <laughs> yeah, it was like yeah. or something the next day? Launch it, Jesus. Um, yeah. So uh, still on the uh, game journalism theme, I just wanted to kind of I, I read this uh, article on tired old tired old hack dot com that was essentially just um, misconceptions about uh, game journalism. I know we've just like, touched on that a little bit. Uh, I just thought it was kind of interesting to go over. Um, yeah. It's just like stuff, I guess, as we've mentioned, game journalists kind of, it's not a particularly <laughs> well-logged profession on the internet, particularly now. So um, 
this this article basically just goes through like uh, the concept of people uh, people being annoyed about um, saying like slow news day about new articles and stuff. People calling things clickbait and stuff. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to kind of go through. Um, God, I've lost this. I've lost, <laughs> I've lost track of what we're doing. Here. We're gonna have to cut here. Yeah. What, what was wrong? Where what was wrong? What's wrong? No, no, no. No, no, it's like, I can't think I about it. I thought it was good if it's listed what was where it covers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, yeah, this, is, this, is the fucking, this is a hard, uh, this oh, is yeah, a hard right. podcast. There ain't no fucking yeah, yeah, news stories. All right, hang on, we, we, can, yeah. we can cut yeah. that bit. Oh, well, well guys, yeah, I'm going yeah. to fucking, I'm going to need a fucking safety rope to get me out of this podcast <laughs> in a minute. Every other one, it's like point after point after point, and this one, it's just yeah. like, Jesus Christ. Uh, all right then. So I just lost that. It needs to look I mean, a bit more. We, can, we, can, we could have about, talked about the Bioware stuff uh, with um, the downtime yeah. thing. It, it, talking about like games as a service, you know, like you can say how we will kind of hope in that anthem and stuff like that. It would kind of tide yeah. us over because every week there should be something new to talk about. <laughs> yeah, keep, keep with that. Because that's keep kind of a new that. development in the, the last couple of years. Yeah, um, yeah that's true. All right then. <laughs> Cut it, we'll pretend Mark had a shit and we'll go back to it. <laughs> I, I could go do one, maybe. I can do a little shit and then we'll just carry on. I'm kidding. Right, I'll so just do a, a cut. But no a, joke, a every time we're about to start, I fucking pray to the shit gods that I don't shit myself. Because <laughs> that is like a legitimate fear. Hey, buddy, your bowels. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. We'll do a cut. Uh, so, um... Yeah, with downtime, obviously this would be uh, more. The downtime would be better concealed if there were if these live service games actually would tide us over for a larger length of time. So, I, I mean, we're not not going to go into like specifics in terms of you know traffic and stuff, but we have a few things that do well for us in terms of a website that are, like patch notes and things and updates. We yeah, like can always yeah. sort of like, organically get something out of that. We can write, people are always unhappy one way or the other with a change or a buff or a yeah. nerf, you know. Yeah, like, Mac, that Fort. I, I don't play Fortnite, but it didn't like that last update, like, piss everybody off. Like, yeah. there's always stuff like that, Fort- right? <laughs> yeah, there's a voice crack. <laughs> <laughs> Deary me. Um, Fortnite's interesting in that it doesn't have, like, um, a test server or anything like that. It just goes, yeah, new feature coming soon, and then just launches it. And then sees what happens. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's kind of there's a constant buzz surrounding that game, and I mean, even if it's negative, it's still. But um, buzz. that's what that's what you need, though, isn't it? That's that's the that's the live service game that you want us to just constantly have. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah which Apex Legends sort of Apex Legends sort of promised to be that and completely fizzled out. I yeah. sort of feel like people still play it. Yeah. But as soon as that first season hit and people, everyone saw the battle pass. Like the crowd yeah. went mild, didn't they? It was really, <laughs> went mild. it was it was bad, wasn't it? Like there was no challenges, and you had to play an insane amount of uh, games each day just to get to rank rank fifty, yeah. seventy, hundred, uh, whatever. Yeah. And um, oh, sorry, yeah, sorry. just no, it's just the enthusiasm for it sort of just drained out of the game immediately. Which I've, I've like you said, EA sort of stealth released it, and they yeah. they clearly did because there was yeah. no plan for it. Yeah, they didn't you expect could, it to last more than like, like, two weeks. You could tell that battle pass was like, ah, shit, we need a battle pass. Um, but yeah, kind of speaking on that, I, I know I'm really looking forward to Mortal Kombat 11. And there have been a few leaks like saying that this will have a battle pass, which is weird because, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, <coughs> but I don't, I don't think there's been in like uh, battle pass in games that aren't shooters. So I'm, I'm curious to see uh, how like Rocket League. Uh, yeah, no, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm yeah, asking. Rocket League is the only one I can. Oh, okay, yeah, no, good point, good point. Um, yeah, I guess yeah, so you could do it if it's very cheap. Rocket League, Rocket League is like eight dollars or something yeah it, it's, and you, you get stuff that you'd want to get as well it's not like here's a new tire yeah, yeah so i'm curious how that'll roll into like yeah i'm curious that'll be like rolled into mk11 if that is true it's it sounds like it'll be true so i'm it's just another like live servicey thing that's like being injected into a different genre i think um, well the thing is with battle pass as well it's good because there's always a, normally a free tier and a premium tier so you can still get yeah. what you want and that's yeah. sort of going away from the topic but um yeah, live service games are pretty much the lifeblood of most sites. You can go around anywhere now and check Google. People are always going for the patch Google notes. Stuff. They're going for live service games. You know, it's, we're very much looking for the big tent poles to hold us up in each quarter. Yeah. So yeah, there's like, like 
like you say, Mortal Kombat's coming out, Days Gone, Rage 2. We're looking towards those. But yeah. there's a sort of pattern developing where everything's more spread out now, where it's like a little bit in spring, tiny bit in the summer, whereas before it was like all in autumn. So like at least, at least that's better in terms of, okay, you've actually got things to write about a bit more often. Yeah. yeah, and then these live service games keep players playing too and keeps us writing at least about something. So, you know, it's easy to shit on them for being like loot boxes and, and uh, <coughs> exploitative or whatever, but it does have a benefit for us and uh, as players and uh, professionals. I mean, so. we always want these live service games to, to do well. Like, uh, they just they just struggle to get the kind of longevity that people expect from them, I think. Um, <coughs> it's one of them perform well. Like, Fortnite, absolutely, uh, like perfected it kind of early by the fact that it's a, still in beta and it can just keep releasing <laughs> yeah. these updates um, like, we, like we said before with Apex Legends it's like uh, that would have performed a lot better but <laughs> it was literally the downloadable uh, season update that kind of made it flounder a little bit if they would have had something that would hooked people a little bit more look you had ideas like Mac um, uh, for the challenges and stuff if they would have had more specific challenges yeah I think even though I really do like the gameplay in that and <coughs> I mean that'll keep me playing like with PUBG I put in 300 hours and there was no challenges back then um, now it just seems like you need to be progressing you need to be <laughs> um, Sorry, I'm, I, I cannot laugh I, I'm I cannot getting through laugh. it oh dear <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah like it seems to um it seems to just be a no-brainer, like especially if they were watching the competition, which they obviously were. You know, they they saw Fortnite, they wanted a piece of that. So you'd think they'd obviously it might be difficult to implement into that engine or whatever that whatever it entails. But um, just like use the Mozambique, get five kills. Uh, you know, something to log on for each day, as opposed to just logging on to go up a tier or or whatever. And also. Like with Fortnite, having people do different challenges, it really does spice up encounters. You encounter people that are <coughs> trying to melee you just for to get that challenge, and it's a funny moment. <coughs> um, Wait until Bradley comes back ready. to life. I'm, I'm oh, cracking, and Bradley's uh, coughing. It's, uh, I know. <laughs> we're, very, we're a very well uh, podcast. But um, yeah. I think there was a lot of money to be made. Uh, for Apex, obviously, it's a free to play, so they kind of had a lot r relying on the uh, the cosmetics already. But I mean, they're not that interesting as like if we're brutal compared to you know John Wick on Fortnite, which everyone was dropping fifteen dollars on. Um, th there's not been a must have yet or uh, any reason to really pick up the battle pass. <coughs> so yeah, I, I, they you missed the trick. They missed the trick, but there, there's still time for them to do it. I feel. But um, just this morning, I thought the queue times were getting a bit long, whereas usually it's instantaneous. Um, I don't know, you know, Wait, that's an anecdotal. It? Yeah, I, I give it a go, you know. Um, I like to okay. get a win and then continue my day. As sad as that is. <laughs> give me that win, baby. <laughs> and if I don't win, I just never come to work. That's why, that's why I'm sometimes off. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, oh. yeah, j carry on. Um, no, I was just going to say, with like sort of downtime as well, we're in this sort of limbo at the moment where we know a new console generation is coming, but no yeah. one can announce it. So we've got like, past The Last of Us 2, we've got like nothing coming out. If you look at like yeah. a calendar of games coming out, it's like, we know stuff's coming, like Beyond Good and Evil 2, so Cyberpunk. Yeah. But, but we just sort of, at the moment, we can't build up to it as much as we'd like. When the PS5 and whatever starts rolling, rolling around, like things will explode again. And that'll be really exciting for the industry as a whole. I think you know it's like a new cycle where everything like it's birthed anew again. Yeah, a lot of those that, that again now. Yeah. yeah, you have your times obviously where you where you bunker down, where the games industries where the games industry bunkers down for a bit, and especially towards the latter end of a of consoles life cycle. <coughs> yeah, well, I think it's cool uh, these downtimes uh, in the years <coughs> and in the grand scheme of a console cycle. I think they're cool because you you begin to like look at games you wouldn't have normally like indie games i think that's uh like when i started here i think i started reviewing things about about when i got back from e3 and there wasn't a lot coming yeah. out so i would look out for indie games and i i played a lot of cool things that i wouldn't have played otherwise like my one of my favorite games last year was the gardens between which none yeah. of you have played which is 
very frustrating <laughs> but it's such a great game and i would not have played that had that come out like two months later in like uh, the in the middle of like a huge review season or something um yeah also that game's on game pass if anyone wants to give it a try oh really it's two hours oh i might yeah, actually on... give it i might should we... oh it's two, two hours it's two hours two hours oh two hours. my god now you're speaking my language that's and it's his choice i think you'll like it it's very <laughs> sweet <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, I think I think also with downtime, it's like um, I think a lot of people kind of that's where a lot of this heat from uh, for game journalism comes from, um, specifically because during this downtime, um, <coughs> you you can't. It's like if you're running if you're running a shop and you've got, you're waiting for your next. I'm going to use a metaphor here now. If you're running oh a shop, okay. <laughs> buckle yourselves in. If you're running a shop and you're waiting for your next batch of products to come in, you've kind of got to do the most with the products that you've already got because you don't just close the fucking shop for like no. two months, do you? Mm. Like you've got to keep things running. Uh, you've always got to put stuff out there. Uh, and we stream every other Friday and we'll be back on uh, Friday the 26th. So thank you and see you later. Bye. 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 See ya. Bye.